Today, I want to eat mac and cheese. Have you decided on the menu yet? If it's already prepared, I'll eat what you made. Well, actually... Are you telling me that you're not in the mood for mac and cheese? That's not what I meant. What is it then? Do you mind if I get a pizza for delivery or something today? Yeah, I'd be happy to, but it's rare for you to have pizza delivered. Usually, you hate that, and you'll say you're on a diet or something. Anyway, I'm not complaining. I know. I'm trying to lose weight, but I just don't feel well today. What? Do you have a fever? I heard flu is going around right now. I went to see the doctor, but he said it's probably just a cold. No fever, no cough. What about COVID? It wasn't that either. I had it checked along with the flu test. Could it be that you are... I thought so, but I was wrong. I got tested and the result was negative. I didn't expect you understood what I was trying to ask you. You were curious whether I was pregnant or not, right? Yes, but it seems that you're not. You've been working overtime a lot lately. You must be exhausted. Don't worry about me. You should get some rest. I don't know why you say that since you usually don't. That's because you haven't been giving me any attention lately. I'm sorry, but it's not that I don't care about you. I'm sorry if I made you feel that way. I'll ask the company to give me some days off. I've been working on my days off too lately. That sounds good. Maybe I'll take one too. It's nice to go out and relax on a weekday. I told you that I'm not feeling well, didn't I? I don't feel like going out at the moment. Besides, I don't want to get even worse and bother you with my illness. But, you know, if you take a few days of good rest, you'll be fine, right? I guess so. How are you? Do you feel a little better? I feel tired, but I also feel that I'm not my usual self. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I'm sure I don't feel great. You slept through the night and still not feeling better? I'm sorry to hear that since I was expecting us to have fun together today. I'm disappointed. Sorry, I'm tired. I've been feeling like this all the time. I feel as if my body is some sort of rock, that it's hard for me to move around. I don't have a fever, and I have no clue why I feel so exhausted. I think I'd better go see the doctor again. Hold on a sec. Maybe you should get insurance first. Insurance? For what? Medical insurance and life insurance. What? Why life insurance? I wonder if I'm going to lose my life. No, that's not what I meant. I didn't say anything like losing your life. But if you were diagnosed with a major prolonged illness, you wouldn't be able to get any insurance. If that happens, you have to pay for those expensive medical treatments. Insurance is just in case something goes wrong. Isn't it possible to have it just in case before going to see a doctor? Emma? I remember you said that you need to review your insurance. Maybe now is the perfect time to do that. Well, I need to consider about that. But I also wonder if now is the perfect time to do that. Also, is it even possible to do that right before the doctor's appointment? Don't worry. Besides, there's a possibility that you're seriously ill. As long as nothing happens for five months after enrollment, when you get sick, you'll get the insurance money. Five months? Are you suggesting that I can't go to the hospital even if something nasty happens to me during that period? You only feel unwell because of fatigue from overtime work, right? There's no way you're having a major illness. Why are you worried? I wonder why. I feel weak when I don't feel well for days. We're still young. You aren't sick either. Besides, you might be fine after the checkup, right? I guess so. Somehow, I feel more energetic after I talk to you, Gerald. That's the spirit. Well, let's go sign up for insurance now, shall we? I made an appointment with my agent.
Do we have to do it so soon? Because you're going to the hospital tomorrow, right? We need to take care of everything before that day. Seems that you're so excited. No, I'm not. I may sound excited, but the truth is I'm worried about you. To be honest, I was thinking what I should do if something bad happened to you. It's a nightmare if I couldn't help you just because I didn't have the money. I'm so nervous. Thanks for your concern. I'll meet you at the ticket gate of the nearest station after work. Okay then. But somehow, I don't feel comfortable about this. Did you call me, Emma? I need you to come to the hospital right now. What's wrong? The doctor wants to talk to you. Why don't you just ask him about the details? I'm watching a movie right now, and it's just getting exciting. I... I've been diagnosed with cancer. What? It metastasized. They said it must have progressed fast because I'm so young. They said I should have come earlier. That's good, isn't it? Which part of that is good, Gerald? Didn't you get an insurance before you went to see the doctor the first time? Now you don't have to worry about money. I hope I get better. Wait a minute. What do you mean? Is it that serious? They said I have only one year to live. No way. I didn't do anything wrong. Why do I have to go through this? Gerald, help me, please. There's so many things I still want to do. I don't want to die yet. Emma, it may be impossible, but let's calm down first. Medical treatment is advancing rapidly now. They may have told you that you only have one year to live, but no one can determine that for sure. Surgery is too difficult, so I'll have to use anti-cancer drugs. I heard that it's very painful. Do you have to stay in the hospital all the time? Will you be able to come home? I guess I can stay at home during the anti-cancer treatment. I'm sure the doctor will explain everything in detail. Come here now. I can't do this anymore. I understand. Do you need anything else? I'll call my parents and bring them with me. You don't need to call your parents. Just come here right away. Emma, how are you feeling? Are you going to be discharged from the hospital soon? Yeah, finally I can go home. You did a great job. You really are awesome. Yeah, I endured it all by myself. You didn't even visit me when I was hospitalized. What a cold-hearted person. I was busy with work, you know. I had to take care of the housework too, but I didn't stop thinking about you. Didn't your mother help you? Well, sometimes. You can't ask her to do it every day, can you? I mean, my dad's here too. How did you know mom was here? When your mother came to visit me, she scolded me. She said that it's my fault. Because I was sick, you had to do the housework for your sake. She also told me that if she didn't help you, you'll collapse from overwork. Mom said that to you? I'm so proud of her. Huh? You're not worried about me? What are you talking about? That's not what I meant. Oh, God. I didn't mean it like that. I'm sorry. Anyway, I've got some good news for you. What's the good news? Since you're getting out of the hospital, even if only temporarily, why don't we go out for a while to celebrate that? I wonder if I can enjoy, since I'm still not feeling well. The doctor said it's better to get some fresh air. You are well aware of that, aren't you? You probably won't be able to move as much as you used to, but it's more stressful for you to stay at home all the time. Well, yeah, but I can't go long distances. I don't think I can stay outdoors all the time. Then why don't we go to a nearby spa? Stay at a nice hotel. Why don't we just eat delicious food and spend a relaxing time in the room? I'll find a hotel with a beautiful view. You don't have to worry about anything, Emma. I'll drive the car and you can just relax. 
Thanks, Gerald. But I think I'll be walking like a baby. I think we should do that next time. Don't worry. My mom and dad will support you. What? Are your parents coming too? I'm not sure I can do it alone, so I asked them to help me. I'm afraid I must say no to that. I don't think your parents will enjoy the trip, and I'll feel uncomfortable too. Don't worry about that. We're family after all. What if it were the other way around? I'm not in perfect health anyway. That's a good point. I know it might be difficult for you, but I want to go on a spa trip. I'm undergoing anti-cancer treatment. Besides, your mother is being very sarcastic with me. It was a sudden thing, and she was just freaking out. She was worried about me. But still. Anyway, I'll force you to come with me when you get out of the hospital. No way. Hey, what did you do? What? Who are you? Are you a fake using my wife's account? Stop talking nonsense! It's me. Who on earth are you? I'm Emma. I'm alive and safe. That can't be true because. Are you trying to say that I should be dead? I'm alive. That's impossible. You fell down the observatory stairs, remember? Because you and your mother pushed me down the stairs. We would not do that, would we? No, I'm sure. What makes you say that? Do you have any proof? The person who was pushed down says so. I was taken to a nearby observatory overlooking the ocean. You kindly gave me a piggyback ride to the top, and then you just pushed me off, didn't you? After you pushed me, you guys took another route down without being seen, didn't you? Why would we harm you? Anyway, why are you still alive? You fell down those high stone steps. The rucksack I was carrying saved me. It caught on a rock next to the stone steps. I was grabbing the rock and trying to get up, when a young couple came and saved me. If it wasn't for that rock, I wouldn't have survived. Huh? How is that possible? You don't seem happy that your wife is still alive. I didn't say that. Of course, I'm happy. That can't be true. Why do you say that? You fell down the stone steps, rolling down. I was too scared to go see you. I was shocked. I don't think so. You are more shocked when you found out that I'm alive. Why are you saying such terrible things? I saw all of that. What? A certain exchange of messages. No kidding. I told her about the spa trip. How did it go? Did she get suspicious? No, she didn't. But she didn't seem to want to go. I told her we'd go somewhere with a beautiful view and relax. I see, but that's okay. She won't be able to walk properly anyway. She can't do anything about it once you carry her in your arms and put her in the car. She has life insurance, right? Leave that part to me. Okay then. Now she has cleared the five-month deductible on her life insurance policy. Now all we have to do is check into a hotel, then take her to the observatory. It's gonna be a little tough for you to carry her on your back, but it's easy when you think of all the money you're going to earn, isn't it? But I don't know if it's going to work out that well. Dad doesn't know anything, does he? He won't find out. He's in a good mood when he's drunk. He'll be fast asleep in his room by the time we leave for the observatory. That's why we picked a hotel with spa facility inside. Well, yeah, but I'm not sure I can do it properly. Don't be a coward. Get a grip. A wife who has been told she doesn't have long to live takes a trip to make her last memories with her husband. Unable to overcome her fear of death. She contemplated suicide, but before reaching her destination, she slipped down the stairs. The story makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Yes, I guess. What? You don't sound very enthusiastic. 
If you just want to spend the money to pay for your wife's medical bills while she waits to die, that's fine. No, I honestly don't think that's a good idea. I need the money right now. It's your fault anyway. Why did you go into debt for nothing? You've been doing that multiple times that you can't afford to pay the monthly payment. What can I do? My allowance wasn't enough. It's okay to have that grudge too. Think of it as punishment for your wife. I see, that's right. Even if you don't do anything, she'll be gone in a year. It's just that it's a little earlier, right? I guess so. That's what I'll think. Okay, I'll do my best on the day of the decision. Please support me on that day. Leave it to me. This is the talk history of you and your mother. This is the proof. Why? How did you manage to get that? After I was treated for my injuries, I asked my father to take me home late at night. Your wife had just died and you were playing video games drinking. You were also snoring loudly in your sleep. That's impossible, right? So I thought for sure there must be some evidence. That's why I had him check your phone. Huh? That's a violation of my privacy. How could you say that? I think you guys are guilty of attempted murder. You were suffering from your illness, so it's how we showed you our kindness. I dropped you down the stairs, but you survived. You're terrible. Doesn't it hurt your feelings to do that? Absolutely not. I don't have any money to waste paying for my wife's medical bills when she only has a year to live. Frankly speaking, I don't want to take care of you. I can't believe you just said that. What a terrible guy. Anyway, you're going to hell. Yeah, whatever. By the way, you've been borrowing money without telling me, haven't you? I can't make it on just $200 a month. Even high school kids get that much nowadays. I was getting the same amount. Even with the same amount of money, what's not enough is not enough. The problem is in the way you spend it. You've been spending so much money for online games. You're also wasting money on drinks and buying drinks for friends and colleagues. You also want to buy products from those luxurious brands to look good. Not to forget betting on horse racing. What? Did you think I didn't know that? I knew you were working hard every day, so I didn't tell you. What I do with the money I earn is my business, right? Anyway, I won't pay a penny more for your treatment. It's your disease, so you're on your own. Yeah, that's the plan. Because when we get divorced, I won't have anything to do with you. You won't have to pay for my treatment anymore. That's what I'm hoping for. I won't have to take care of you anymore. Of course. I'll change the beneficiary of the insurance money too. Huh? What do you mean? You know that, don't you? Why should I let a stranger like you get my insurance money? Because you signed the contract and I'm the beneficiary. Are you stupid? It doesn't work like that. I can change the beneficiary whenever I want. I don't want you to do that. I don't think it's going to make much difference even if you get the money. What do you mean? Where do you think I am? Your parents' house? Hospital? No. Right now, I'm at the police station. Why are you there? I told you before. You and your mother are attempted murderers. No way. I just explained the situation with the evidence I got. You're lying, right? I'm not lying. I almost died. Of course, I'm having the police to take a look at the conversation with your mother. Are you serious? I told you I'm not lying. No, wait. You misunderstood me. Let me explain. Explain what? The evidence is perfect. You can't get away with this, okay? Now, they're getting ready for each of you. You and your mother are going to be charged with attempted murder. That's not what I said. It was my mother's suggestion. I couldn't refuse because she told me to do it. 
but you finally agreed with her. And it was you who pushed me down the stairs. You are the crime suspect. I wonder who's more guilty, you or your mother. Why don't you do some research before the police come? Emma, I'm sorry. I apologize for everything I've said and done. I was up to my neck in debt, so I had no choice. We're a married couple, right? You understand that, don't you? Married couple? You gotta be kidding me. I told you, didn't I? You're the one who's going to hell. I don't want that to happen. I don't want to go to jail. I think it's better for you to go to jail. You can't borrow money and your debt won't increase. Why don't you ask your father to pay the rest? Oh no. After that, my husband and mother-in-law were taken away by the police. At my parents-in-law's house, my father-in-law, who had no idea what was going on, watched in amazement. My husband and mother-in-law were arrested and charged. I knew my husband was in debt. When the investigation went further, it seems that my mother-in-law also had a large amount of debt. Naturally, my father-in-law found out and divorced her. I feel sorry for my father-in-law when I think about his feelings. But in the end, I think it was the best solution for him. After I recovered from my injuries, I was given another round of anti-cancer treatment. To my surprise, the cancer cells disappeared from my body and I was completely cured. I think it was a miracle. When I found out the result, I shed tears of joy together with my parents. I learned that such miracles can happen. There is a possibility of recurrence. I need to be careful. But I'm now able to live a normal life at home with my parents while undergoing regular checkups. It is thanks to my parents that I'm able to live a peaceful life. I'm glad that I was able to get a divorce at that time. I wonder if I should be grateful to my ex-husband for that. Good evening, Kelly. It's about 8 p.m. there, right? Hello, Vernon. It's almost 8.30 p.m. Was it a busy day at your work today? Yeah, it was. I'm used to it, but it's still tiring. Thank you for working hard every day for our family. But now that your overseas assignment is over, you can finally come home, right? I'm sure the kids are looking forward to finally meeting you. They don't usually say any of their concerns, but... I think they miss their father. Really? I thought they already forgot me. You're their father. They won't forget you just because they haven't met you in three years. But Kyle is only five years old, right? He was two when I was transferred to Singapore. I thought he wouldn't remember. Don't worry, because you would come back here for long vacations, and we used to go on vacation here. I'm sure he knows you're his father. That's how it goes with parents and children. At first, I really didn't like the idea of three years overseas assignment. But now that I think about it, it all happened so fast. I was so busy raising kids and working that three years seemed like a blink of an eye when I think about it now. I've been trained a lot. By the way, when is your return date? Two months from now, on the 27th. So close. I'm looking forward to it. What do you want to eat first after a long absence? Let's see. I think I'll have macaroni and cheese. Mac and cheese? I'll get it ready for you then. I'll get some expensive ingredients. I hope they're not too expensive. Leave it to me. The kids love mac and cheese too. Are you going back to the headquarters as soon as you get back? Sounds like that's the plan. So they're putting me online right now for a meeting with the head office in New York. It's pretty tough because of the time difference. I think they are counting on you. I'm happy for you. My colleagues said that three years in Singapore is a customary career path. I'm sure I'll be able to work at a similar position when I go back to the head office. I can repay the favor you've done to our family for the past three years. Oh, please don't say that. It's only natural for a wife to look after the house while her husband is away. But I'm so happy for you. After three years of hard work in Singapore, it's all worth it. 
All of your hard work is now paid off. Yes, you're right. Anyway, I need to talk to you. Okay, what is it? Um... Oh, sorry, Vernon. Can I call you later? I think the kids have started fighting. Fighting? A girl and a boy fighting each other? Lately, Kyle has been learning a lot of new words, so he has been arguing with his sister. I see. I don't like it when they fight. Well, I'll see you tomorrow or when I have time. Sorry, I'll get back to you. It's been barely three years since my husband Vernon was transferred to Singapore by himself. He will be back home in two months. I had no doubt in my mind that we would be able to live together as a normal family. I was looking forward to that day to come, but I never imagined that he would betray me like that. Over the weekend, I sent a message to him. Hello, Vernon. I hope this is good timing for you. You said that you want to have a discussion with me the other day, didn't you? Oh, yeah, that one. Do you mind if we have a discussion about that now? Kate is at the dance club and Kyle is taking a nap. Napping. That's nice. Kids are supposed to play and sleep as much as they can. The other day, Kate told me that adults can buy whatever they want, whenever they want, even though that's not true. So, what is it that you want to talk about? Is it about the things after you came back here? No, it's not about that. Actually, I've been thinking about what I'm going to say, but when I get back, I want you to get out of that house. What? Sorry, I don't understand why I should do that. What do you mean you want me to leave? I can't think straight. I want to change my family. What do you mean by that? I really don't get it at all. Explain it properly so I can understand. Okay, calm down and listen to me. Actually, I met someone I like in Singapore. I'm in love with her. Someone you love? In Singapore? Yes, and I want to go back home with her and our child. A uh, child? Is the child hers? Or is it yours? She's our child. She's two years old now. So you're saying you had a local wife there? You cheated on me and had a child with her, right? And that the child is two years old? That's just right after you were transferred there. So you're saying that you have a child there, but you just want to come back home without thinking about what you're going to do next? The moment I met her, I knew that we were meant for each other. I knew she was the one. So I'm going to take her and the child back home to live in the house. And I want you guys to leave. Wait a minute. That's so selfish. Does she know I exist? You're married, remember? She doesn't know anything about you and the kids. I can't tell her that. So I want you to shut up and get out of that house. Huh? Vernon, do you have any idea what you're talking about? I mean, you're cheating on me. That's a great betrayal. Betrayal or not, it's my life, so I can live it the way I want. It's none of your business. How can it be none of my business? You have to take responsibility. As for me, what are you going to do about Kate and Kyle? Are you going to divorce me? Pay for the alimony and child support? I'm going to feed my new family, remember? That's why my money will go to my new family. Are you saying that you're not going to pay me alimony or child support? No kidding! That's so selfish of you! You work for the government employee and you've been living with the kids for the last three years. So you don't need me to be there for you, right? She needs me. That's why I want to support her properly. Are you saying you're coming back with that girlfriend of yours? We're getting married, so I'm going to go back home first, clean up the house. Also, I'll get divorced from you, pick her up, and come back. So you're going back and forth, aren't you? That sounds like a lot of work. That's why I wanted to tell you about the divorce and the house first. Then, even if it's less than two months from now, 
I'm sure that you're ready to move out. I don't know. Is it really that big of a deal? You're asking me out of the blue. After three years of your absence, I thought we'd finally be able to live together as a family in this house. I'm really sorry about that, but it's going to be me and my new family living in the house. I'm sorry for the short notice, but I need you to step aside for the sake of my happiness. That's too selfish. Why should I step aside for your happiness? What about our family's happiness? But this is a decision that's been made. You'll have to leave the house as soon as possible. And of course, move your stuff out neatly so that my new family and I can move in comfortably. I'll come back home once in two months on the 15th and we'll discuss about the divorce. I'm not going to change my mind. Are you really going to divorce me, Vernon? Of course. I'm getting a divorce and I'll be marrying my girlfriend. If you divorce me, I won't forgive you. After such a terrible betrayal, I'm going to make sure I'm thoroughly done with you. Wow, that's a scary thing to say. I'll make sure you pay for the alimony and child support for the kids. I'm not going to just sit back and cry myself to sleep while you're doing this horrible thing to me. There's no way I can afford the money, so give up. You know what people say, that you can't give what you don't have, don't you? I'll do whatever it takes to make you pay for those, even if it takes decades, and I don't like the idea of letting you have your own way. If anything, I don't want you to be happy. I'm going to fight you with everything I've got. Be prepared. I don't know what you're going to do, but don't do anything nasty. I was both angry and annoyed at Vernon. I couldn't even understand why I had married him. Everything just went blank inside my head. But I am a mother of two children. I couldn't just stand by and watch with my fingers crossed. My son woke up from his nap and patted me worriedly on the back, bringing me back to my senses. I then proceeded with my preparations. Kelly, what does this mean? Vernon, have you returned home? Welcome home. Stop kidding me. Why is there a board that says the house is on sale, the front gate? That's because I've sold the house. Anyway, where are we going to discuss the divorce? Do you want me to book a hotel's conference room? Huh? Don't be silly. It's not the right time to book a conference room. What do you mean that you've sold the house? I don't have a home to come back to. Of course not. You don't have a place to come back to. That house is for my family. You sold it without my permission. Vernon, listen to me. Have you forgotten about that house? Seven years ago, when we bought the house. Seven years ago? I don't understand. You bought the house in my name because I had more money saved up and because it was easier to get approved for a loan since I work for the government, right? What I do with what's in my name is up to me, isn't it? I just sold my own house on my own. Do you have a problem with that? That's too selfish. We lived together after we bought it, and we should discuss it. You took the liberty of going overseas to a new place, got a new girlfriend, and even have a child. And then, when you come back, you ask me to move out of the house because you're bringing her back with you? That's selfish! What about the division of property? I'm paying the mortgage too, so I should be entitled to it. I checked with my lawyer and I'm properly following the law. Because you clearly stated on the line that you have no intention of paying alimony and child support. You made a serious mistake. Mistake? Don't tell me you sold the house for the alimony and child support. The mortgage you were paying was not enough for alimony and child support. I'll be sure to bill you for the rest. Through my lawyer, of course. Where are you guys? There's no way I'm telling you that. You need to ask my lawyer. Besides, I don't want you coming to see me and the kids. You're having so much fun taking away my place of refuge. You're the worst kind of person. How dare you? You sounded so happy when you tried to kick us out of the house. 
Did you have fun making a local wife, even though you were still married to me? Did you enjoy living with your local wife and daughter there? Well, that's... That's what you deserve, so you'd better accept the bitter fact. We need to discuss the divorce first. Can you come to my lawyer's office? Lawyer's office? Yes, the office is in the front of the nearest station of your workplace. When you come, we'll talk about the divorce and the rest of the money. Of course, with my lawyer whom I can trust. Don't think you'll get away with this. Oh, and by the way, I'll call your company too. What? Why? The company has nothing to do with it. Because you cheated on your wife while you were away from home and were getting a divorce. You're not family anymore, so there will be a lot of procedures at the company. I don't know who the other party is yet, but if it's a co-worker in Singapore or something, it's just too much. It can't be help. I met the love of my life. I don't care about the company. I just want to make the woman I love happy. Was it really a co-worker of yours? A woman who worked there, in the same company, and she didn't know that you were married? That's strange, isn't it? Singapore is one of the biggest cities in the world, and there are a lot of people there. I mean, they don't even check if I'm married or not, so... I'm sorry. I still need to contact the company. I'd better talk to the company about that in detail. Wait a minute. If you do that, not only me, but she could lose her job too. She didn't know you were married, did she? Then she's a victim. I'm sure she'll be fine. If anything, she's in the same boat as me. I told her that I'm a married man after a while. Oh, wow. I'm stunned. So then she knows now, right? She saw my messages with you. That's how she found out. But she still said she loves me and that we should get married and live together in the U.S. She said she loves me. Looks like I've got more money to charge for alimony. I don't know her contact information indeed, so I still have to tell the company. I'll have my lawyer go through the company and talk to her about the fee. Our daughter is still young, for God's sake. Please don't do that. How dare you talk to me like that? Even our kids are still very young, seven and five years old. At this point in time, you're so busy talking about your girlfriend and daughter in Singapore that you don't even worry about Kate and Kyle. You are such a selfish man. We've been apart for three years anyway. That's not the point, is it? They are your children. Anyway, please come to the lawyer's office. We'll talk about all this. Please, don't tell the company about the affair and anything related to that. It's up to you. What do I have to do to get you not to tell them? If you and your girlfriend pay proper alimony and child support, I might reconsider. There's no way I have that much money. Then I'll just tell the company. The company triggered the problem by transferring you to Singapore in the first place. Wait a minute, Kelly. I'm sorry. I'll make sure I pay you alimony too. I'm finally back at the head office and I'm on the fast track to a big promotion. My life is just about to begin. If I fail at this point, everything I've worked for will be a waste. What does that have to do with me? Everything you're saying is only for your own reasons. You cheated on me and even have a child. You also forced me to move out of my house. You've got to be kidding me. What about the lives of our beloved children? I don't understand why you can only think about your own happiness. Don't talk to me so coldly like that. All right, I'll go to the lawyer's office right now and get down on my knees or whatever. Getting down on your knees won't change anything you've done. I don't even want to see that. Listen, I'm really sorry about what I've done to you. If you really feel bad, then come to the lawyer's office properly and show your sincerity in the visible form of money. That's the only way to resolve this. Okay then. Anyway, I'll be right there. So please, don't tell the company. I'll give you three more minutes. Your joke isn't funny at all, Kelly. Then I'll give you 30 minutes. Please come quickly. I'll be waiting for you. I'll be there as soon as I can. I don't know who started the rumor, 
but word of Vernon's affair spread quickly throughout the company. He was supposed to return to the headquarters, but he was transferred to a remote place somewhere near Seattle. Of course, there was no way that his girlfriend and child from Singapore would come to such a place, and he was easily dumped right after that. He had cheated and betrayed his wife and two children, so he deserves to be punished. I hope he will live the rest of his life reflecting on the mistakes he made. Until now, Vernon has been working alone and lonely at his new office. He sent me a letter through my lawyer telling me that he could only keep working to pay for the alimony and child support, and it's just too hard for him to bear. Of course, I ripped the letter and threw it right away to the garbage bin. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and leave us a comment down below. It means a lot to us. See you next time.